I came in from over on the north side, the first time I'd ever driven a dump truck. On a cloudy morning this spring, Ethan Ritter drove a truck owned by his stepdad's oil rig maintenance company, lost in a maze of fracked oil wells. And the guy was telling me, well, just follow the trucks, you know, and you'll find it. He came to a full stop at this intersection. When I had my windows down, I couldn't hear nothing going on. I couldn't, you know, I didn't see nothing. I didn't see any trains, didn't hear no trains. The coast was clear, I was going. It's almost like everything went into like super slow. The next thing I know, that train hits me and I smoke my face on the windshield. It's crazier than any, any roller coaster you can find, I'll tell you that. Months later, bits of the truck still litter the site. There's another piece right here. And a new warning sign tallies victims, like Ethan. The metal from a truck, dude, from it burning. Climate Desk has travelled a long way to get to this intersection and it may look pretty peaceful to you right now but in fact this intersection is a grim reminder of the human cost of North Dakota's oil boom. Residents say that there's more traffic coming down this road because it's the only access point to a suite of oil rigs just across this ridge. It's not only the oil production but also the drilling, fracking, all of the, the traffic that's needed for those wells. Williston's only two dedicated occupational health doctors are stretched thin. Lacerations, burns, um, fractures, um, um, eye injuries, chemical inhalation type injuries. Okay. Reported injuries in North Dakota's oil fields have quadrupled over the last five years. There's various type of mass. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has found that oil and gas workers across the country are killed at a rate nearly eight times the national average. So you're in an environment where the potential for hazard is high. But just how high is still an open question. Underreporting plagues a system. Employees are often misguided into thinking that if they report an accident, they'll potentially lose their job. And some companies will say anything that's first aid, we just want to pay for it ourselves and we don't want to deal with uh, state paperwork. Fine, that's fine under North Dakota law. That's where the general impact was that was on the, on the rear end there. Exactly where my face smashed into the windshield. Not taking it to the officials is exactly what Ethan did. Getting hit by a train wasn't his first big accident. A couple of years ago, he crushed his spine working on an oil pad. When, when you report something up here to, to workman's comp, there's a lot of companies that look at, at your accident record. If you have X amount of accidents, they're not going to let you work from because they think you're a careless company. So they handled the costs in-house, paying for his treatment and keeping him on salary. I mean, we kind of both helped each other out. Not every day you can go back and sit in something like this, I guess. Still, oil companies themselves say safety is better than ever. There's actually not much oil coming out of this rig, and that's because it's a training rig. We've been invited here by Neighbors Drilling to check out just how the company trains their workers. Safety is, is taken seriously, and I couldn't imagine if we didn't have the safety things in place, how many people would be getting killed daily. Uh, my name's Mark Mossbrooker. They call me Shark. A lot of hand, hand and finger injuries. These guys have a tendency to go like this, put their hand right in here, and as it rotates back around, Ouch. Hand injuries may be common, but they're far from the most traumatic. In 2010, Larry Dew was killed on a neighbor's rig here in North Dakota, when a chunk of iron the size of a small car fell 14 stories onto his head. Safety training begins before workers even get to the oil fields, often in this retrofitted basement. We are actually doing something that workers themselves do all the time. They're getting accredited to be safe on the oil fields here. One thing that everyone in this part of North Dakota agrees on is that it wouldn't hurt to put the brakes on the boom. It's growing so fast here, no one can really keep up. I mean, this is only beginning. The work here can be safer. I mean, it needs to slow down a little bit, but then again, it can't. 